Hello friends and welcome. I'm V8 Adam. In today's video I'm going to be refurbishing the air cleaner from my 1972 Buick Riviera. I don't believe the air cleaner has ever had any refurbishment work. There are some rust spots, pitting and the paint's looking a bit tired and flat. There was a seal in the lip which I've already removed by hand. I didn't use any particular tools to do this. I just took my time, slowly pulled it out with my fingers and the seal is not broken or snapped so it'll be suitable for refitting later. A small area of exposed paint is just a test that I've done to see how easily the paint comes off. Thankfully it very easily strips back. I'm going to be using some simple tools for the job. A pair of gloves at £1.50, a respirator at about £25 and safety glasses at £12. As there will be paint and metal fragments flying around. The paint removal itself, I'm simply using some metal wire brushes at about £8 and they fit in a standard drill. Mine's a DeWalt at £100 but you can use any, any drill that you like. And Sesame Street towel is of course optional. So let's get started. Here I'm working on the top part of the air cleaner. I'm just using the wire brush attachments in the drill to remove the paint from some of the main flatter parts of the air cleaner to begin with. Just working it around, trying to get as much paint off as possible. I've just switched attachments to get into one of the smaller areas. Here is the result so far. Most of the paint has come off really easily using the brush. You can still see here there are some parts of the paint or primer left over. I'm not actually sure what the original coating methods were back in uh, 72. To give you an idea of how long the removal takes, I filmed a small bit of the removal here in real time. Just be careful with the brush bouncing off of the uh, shapes around the air cleaner. Just take your time, use the appropriate brushes for each section and it will make it easier and reduce the bouncing or the binding against various shapes. So all of the paint is removed from the bottom part now and I'm really happy with how this is coming along. You can see some small bits of paint or adhesive in the recesses here. It's not something I'm overly concerned about. I can always use some hand wire brush tools to get the last little bits off. You can see how going over with the brushes some more has stripped everything right back to the bare metal and remove those underlying primer and fragments that were left over from the previous paint. I've now repeated the process on the top of the air cleaner, stripped it back to the bare metal, it's now ready for priming and painting. I've swept and vacuumed this room to reduce the dust and lay down a plastic dust sheet. These are the items that we're going to be using for the painting process. We've got a respirator, safety glasses, gloves, and the primer I'll be using is an acid etch primer from Halfords at £10. This actually contains an acid which etches a bond into the metal. More importantly, we have our prep materials, which are the preparation wipes at £1.50 for five and the tack cloths at £6 for ten, both from Halfords. The painting is going to involve an etch primer, high build primer and then the black satin paint. Start with the prep wipes and you can see how much paint and dirt comes off in a short amount of time. The key here is to make sure that you're always using clean side on a new part. So make sure that the wipe is folded into quarters, wipe a section of the surface, then turn the prep wipe and wipe the next section. Keep going until the wipes are clean. And then you can use a tack cloth in the same way, pulling the cloth in one direction. I'm now spraying the first coat of etch primer. This is really light. Wait about 15 to 30 minutes between coats. Make sure that it's elevated off the dust sheet. I used a tube container that I had to hand. So here is the air cleaner after about three coats of etch primer. It's come out to a nice even coverage. As I mentioned earlier, the primer contains an acid that etches into the metal slightly and then it evaporates away, leaving a very strong bond between the metal and the primer. This primer therefore acts as a strong layer for the subsequent layers of primer and paint to bond to. During my research, I looked into the curing times between layers. There are some varying opinions about this. Some people say to wait for the etch primer to dry for 30 minutes, others say 24 hours. The instructions on the can say 24 hours, and personally, I can understand this. If you think about it, the etch primer contains an acid that must dry off. If you don't allow enough time for that to happen, then it is conceivable that the remaining acid would have some kind of effect on subsequent layers. What I'm going to do is allow each layer to dry for 24 hours on this top part of the air cleaner and when I come to work on the lower part I'm only going to allow 30 minutes between layers. 
I'm partly going to do this as a bit of a non-scientific experiment, but also because, I'll be honest guys, I don't have a huge amount of time to work on this project. I mentioned earlier that I'll be using an etch primer, high build primer, and then black satin. The reason for this is that, as I've mentioned, the etch primer bonds to the surface well and creates a strong foundation. The high build will then fill in any tiny gaps and imperfections in the surface. It can then be sanded down to a smooth surface, and if this was a body panel, then it would be a very long process and would involve also the use of a guide coat. If you're interested in learning more about that process, though, I'd recommend checking out an excellent Eastwood video in the description. As this air cleaner will obviously sit in the engine bay and it will be removed, it will be possibly knocked about. I just want it to look fresh. I don't need it to look body panel perfect. And so the etch primer has already dried for 24 hours. So now I'll start applying the high build in the same way. The very light first coat, wait about 15 to 30 minutes, and then the next coat. You might notice the method that I'm using, which is to rotate the air cleaner on its support as I spray. I found this easier and safer to spray the very edges. And you can really see the advantages of elevating it off of the dust sheet as it will then not stick and you'll get better coverage. And here it is after just a couple of initial coats. The high build primer creates quite a rough, almost textured surface, which is then flattened down when it's sanded. I've seen some people wet sand primer, but I've also read that primer is very porous. Now, again, this makes sense as the porous nature would help paint absorb into the primer and create a really strong bond. If the primer is porous, then you don't want to wet sand it as the water will absorb into the primer and could create rust. I'll therefore be dry sanding it using 400 and 600 grit sandpaper. The higher the grit of the sandpaper, the smoother the paper and the finish. Don't jump straight to a higher grit. Make sure you work your way up for best results. It's been 24 hours now and I've done the sanding. You can see some areas where the high build has actually rubbed off completely and it's back to the etch primer. It's not a problem as the next stage will be applying the paint and as long as it's not back to the bare metal, then that's fine. It didn't take that long to sand, probably about 15 minutes max. Just applying light pressure, let sandpaper do the work. I then ran over a tack cloth to remove any residue. Now I'm applying the satin black paint using a similar method to the primer. The important factor here is to rotate the air cleaner to try and avoid a striping effect on the paint. And here is the top of the air cleaner after the satin paint has dried and it looks so good guys. The paint has come out really nicely and it looks so fresh. Here are some pictures of what it looked like before. You can see the surface rust, the paint is really patchy and faded. But now it looks brand new, so much better. I need to reinstall the seal that runs along the recess. I've cleaned this up a bit as best I can using some alcohol cleaner. It looks OK, but when it's in the recess against fresh paint, it looks a little bit tired. I'll use some paint or maybe some dye to try and restore this to a more complementary look after it's been installed. For the installation of the seal, I'm going to be using some 3M weather strip adhesive. I really like 3M products. I use them where I can and they really don't let me down. There is a good technique that I picked up for using this adhesive when applying seals like this. I saw it on Dennis Gage's channel, My Classic Car TV, which I highly recommend. He had a company called Steel Rubber Products demonstrate correct application techniques and the link to the video is in the description if you want to check it out. The method is to apply a very thin bead of adhesive to the metal surface and then use a tool to spread it and flatten the bead out. You then do the same to the rubber surface. You want to wait for them both to go tacky before sticking them together. This creates a much stronger bond than just squeezing a whole load of adhesive onto the metal and shoving the rubber on top of it. So now that we're done with the top part, let's move on to the lower part of the air cleaner. I've done a small amount of prep work here, just removing any parts such as hoses, get them out of the way so they don't get damaged. Safety gear and tools, same as before. As with the top part, I'm working on the larger, flatter areas first, and the paint is coming off really nicely. You can see me using my foot as a brace on the air cleaner to prevent it moving about too much. I find that if the brush slipped off the cleaner and hit the towel, the towel would wrap around the brush in quite a dangerous way. So just be really careful or maybe just ditch the towel completely. All the following steps are the same as they were with the top of the air cleaner. Strip back, prep, etch, high build, sand, tack cloth, paint. And here it is guys, fully finished and installed. It looks amazing. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. The paint looks great. It really is the centrepiece of the engine bay once again.
I've also installed a new preheat hose, which is black and looks so much better than that old worn silver one that was there before. I've installed a small washer below the wing nut just to prevent the wing nut gouging any paint out as it's wound down. The air cleaner does look a bit bright against the rest of the engine bay, but that's OK. I'm going to be doing some more work in the engine bay to freshen everything up. I'll be painting these brackets over here, painting the valve covers, doing what I can with the rest of the engine block, firewall, tops of the arches, just to make everything look a bit better, a bit fresher. Last but not least, I also got a new K&N air filter to celebrate the restoration. So this will never need changing and it looks so good against the restored air cleaner. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. This is the first job and the first video that I've done on this Buick and it really means a lot to me. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to. I'll be doing some more videos and some more jobs on this Buick. Upload them as soon as I can. Till next time, this is V8 Adam signing off.